Hello, welcome to the part 3 of Network Devices. In this lesson, we are going to learn about hubs, bridges, repeaters, and access points. After this lesson, you will be able to distinguish between these network devices and also know their core functions. Also, we shall compare hubs to switches and other to know the difference between them. To begin, let's quickly recall the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we talked about some important networking terminologies that we use every day. We spoke briefly about packets, host, servers, IP addresses, network ID, host ID, and subnet mask. We again learned about routers and how they work. We learned that routers move packets between networks. And before they do that successfully, they have to register their routes in a routing table. And this is possible through these three ways, either by directly connected routing, static routing or dynamic routing through some dynamic routing protocols. We again spoke about types of routers and some factors you should look out for when purchasing a router. It is highly recommended you watch the previous video before you continue with this one. The link is in the description below. In today's lesson, we will start with hubs. A hub is a node that broadcasts data packets in a network. Hub work at the layer 1 of the OSI model. In this illustration, we can create a simple LAN network using a hub in place of a switch. But once this is a hub, it means that it will broadcast every packet to all connected devices in this simple network. This means that, if host A sends a packet across this hub, same packet will be sent to all the other host at the same time. Meaning, not only the intended destination will receive that packet. This makes a hub not too intelligent in its operations. Comparing switches to hubs. In this network connected by a switch, if host A sends a packet to host B, the switch will receive this packet and intelligently look at the MAC address of the destination host and sends the packet to only host B. But in this network connected by a hub, this hub will receive the packet and broadcast the packet to all the other hosts at the same time. This causes unnecessary traffic on the network as well as data insecurity. In a nutshell, this technology is deprecated. Talking of bridges. Bridges are used to connect two or more network segments together. The basic role of bridges in network is to forward frames between the different segments that the bridge connects. For example, if we have these two network segments connected by hub, we can move data across segment A through a bridge to segment B. By so doing, we then have a separate collision domain so there wouldn't be too many traffic on the network. So if this host in this segment sends a packet to this host in this segment, the bridge will receive the packet and forward to this hub and the hub will broadcast to all the other hosts on this segment. On the other hand, if this host sends a packet to this host in the same segments, the bridge will also receive this packet but this time, will not forward to the other side of the segment. This is because, bridges learn by media access addresses, which is usually called MAC addresses, of the destination host to determine which side of the network the destination host belongs, before it decides to forward the packets or not. Lastly, bridges usually have two ports and work at the layer 2 of the OSI model. To talk of repeaters. Repeaters are devices that regenerates data signals in other to extend the length to which the signal can be transmitted over the same network. As data signals travel over a long distance, depending on the medium being it a cable or wireless, attenuation occurs. Meaning, the signal decays. When this happens, we can place a repeater in the middle to regenerate and amplify the weak signal coming from this side to the other side of the network. A real-world example is, in your home or office network, you will notice that most of the devices that are far down the stairs, or even upstairs, far away from the router are not able to access the network, or even have weaker signals. 
In this case, you can connect a repeater and place it at a vantage point for this problem to be solved. A repeater operates at the layer 1 of the OSI model. There are many different types of repeaters depending on a particular field of work. With respect to networking, we have wired repeaters and wireless repeaters. Among all the other types, these are the ones we usually see in our home office networks. Examples of wired repeaters are telephone line repeater, fiber optical cable repeater, and many more. Examples of wireless repeaters are satellite repeater, microwave repeater, Wi-Fi repeater, LTE repeater, etc. This is where we can cover at this level. Another network device we will talk about today is wireless access point. As the name implies, a wireless access point gives other devices wireless access to a network. In this example, if we have wireless device such as phones, laptops and even smartwatches and needs to connect to this network. We can connect an access point by cable to this LAN and the access point will give these devices a wireless access. In most cases, people mistake wireless access points for routers, but these two are completely different in their operations. As we said in our previous lesson, routers connect two or more networks together, giving birth to what we call the internet, a simple form of internetworks. In other words, the internet is made up of bunch of routers interconnecting different networks from different geographical location together. A wireless router serves the function of both access point and router. Access point on the other hand, only connects wireless capable devices within same network by wireless means called Wi-Fi. I hope this lesson serves you well. Kindly share this video and subscribe to this channel for us to be able to do more. See you in the next lesson.